Now you guys know who I'll be voting for this year. So, <laughs> welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Guys, I have been, uh, I haven't been on here for a quick minute anyways. Um, mainly because there's not much more going on. There's not a whole lot that's new. In my last video, I just kind of said we're, we're moving sideways and we could be doing this for a while. It's boring, but, and that's what we've been kind of doing. But I wanted to jump on here and give you guys a few updates. There are a couple things in the news that could be uh, kind of contributing to some of this sell pressure. Um, and I just wanted to give, give you guys uh, kind of my outlook and kind of take a look at the charts and see where we're actually at. So let's jump into it. We'll jump over to the news first. Um, now, this has been uh, the last week or so. The German government moves millions in Bitcoin to exchanges. So what happened here was the German government confiscated $3 billion worth of Bitcoin uh, from a um, piracy, a movie piracy website. And doesn't help Bitcoin's case by any means because all the naysayers want to say that Bitcoin is just for criminals and and money traffickers or money launderers. But um, these things do happen. So uh, the problem here is that the German government has been dropping these straight onto exchanges, onto Coinbase and Kraken, uh, instead of selling over the counter, which would probably dampen the effects a, a little bit, at least, uh, you know, not make it so drastic right away. Uh, but this is happening. So, um, you know, this, this is just something that kind of happens every once in a while. You know, governments seize, seize money and seize Bitcoin from, from bad, bad actors. And we can just kind of expect these kind of things to happen from time to time. But this is just kind of a short term thing. Uh, shouldn't be a big deal in the, the big um, grand scheme of things. Now, the next thing I want to jump over to you guys, um, this was what happened yesterday that caused the major crash, which was about four or five um, percent. but. Uh, Mount Gox, guys, Mount Gox happened in 2014, and we are still dealing with this 10 years later. It uh, honestly, at this point, almost seems like market, market manipulation. You know, if you want to disrupt Bitcoin's price, all you have to do is post or publish a article about Mt. Gox doing this or that. And it's been going on for 10 years. Uh, but yesterday, um, Mt. Gox said that it will begin returning more than four, or uh, excuse me, 140,000 Bitcoin in July to clients whose assets were stolen in a 2014 hack. Now, guys, this is good, honestly. I mean, I want, I want to be done with Mt. Gox. This has been 10 years, and it's kind of been, you know, it was like the 2014 version of FTX. The, the difference is, is FTX is mostly done and over with, and we've dealt with it, and we're moving on. Mount Gox has been a thing for 10 years. And honestly, these people that are owed this Bitcoin should have this Bitcoin. Whether they sell it or not is completely up to them. But get that Bitcoin back to those people and let them do what they will. You know, let's be done with this. It seems like every, I don't know, six months, whatever it be, Every so often we get a new 
thing about Mt. Gox and it completely scares all the speculative money that's in the market and we always see a reaction to Bitcoin's price. So honestly, I hope they do get rid of this in July. You know, let's be done with this and move on. Um, but that's what happened yesterday. And, uh, you know, as this article says, Bitcoin threatens 60,000 on Mt. Gox News, but sales could be less than feared. So honestly, guys, this is much less of an issue, in my opinion, than, than the markets make it out to be. Um, I am just looking forward to a time when we do not have to, to even talk about Mt. Gox anymore. You know, Mark Carpels and Mt. Gox uh, was a black stain on Bitcoin. And we just need to, if you, just like FTX was, and we need to be off that. Um, but another thing guys is if you are still on exchanges with your cryptocurrency, this is another reason, you know, Mt. Gox and FTX and all these other exchanges that have had problems and lost their customers, Bitcoin guys, you need to be off, off exchanges with your crypto. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the one exception, maybe would be to use their staking. But even then, you're taking a risk with keeping your, your crypto on exchanges rather than getting them off exchange and into a cold wallet. Guys, I did a few reviews of cold wallets and I just wanna jump, uh, I'm gonna bring up my uh, Tangem code. If you guys are looking to get into a good, um, a good wallet, Get into Tangem. It's it's honestly I've had the Ledger uh, Nano. I I have the Ledger Nano. I have um, the Elipal Titan 2.0. Tangem was has been in my experience by far the easiest one to set up. It has, I mean, the app is just amazing, and it's an EAL six, a EAL five. Uh, so the security is top notch as well, and it's economical. I think the two card set is like $50. Uh, the three card set is 60 bucks. And with my code right here on the screen, you can get 10% off of that. So guys go over and do that. Get off exchanges, you know, don't get in this thing where you, you lose a bunch of money on an exchange like Mt. Gox and are out your entire money, if not forever, for 10 years, like, like the people with Mt. Gox have been, you know, get into self-custody. I can't stress that enough. Um, but uh, the, the next thing, guys, I want to jump over and just show you guys the charts and give you guys um, some insight into what I'm seeing. Now, we do have some economic indicators coming in. We have had a little bit of a nice bump back up today, uh, but we do have some economic indicators. This Thursday, we have GDP coming in as well as uh, dur durable goods. Um, and then on Friday, we've got personal spending, personal income, and core PCE inflation coming in. So, we could see some volatility around that at the end of the week, but in my opinion, I think these numbers are just going to give Fed Chair Powell and the Fed uh, Federal Reserve a bit more ammunition on lowering rates at the end of the year, turning on the money printers, and you know what happens to Bitcoin when they do that. So, um. Anyways, guys, I want to just show you kind of where we're at. You know, if you zoom out, honestly, it's been this for the, the past few weeks. Just nothing but complete <laughs> and utter selling like this slow bleed. It seems like it's it's like every day you check the price and without fail, almost every day, it's down further than it was the day before. And it's it's that kind of action that 
in my opinion, that's the one that like really rubs on my nerves uh, because like I don't mind the choppiness, but when it's just this slow bleed out, it's just super, super annoying to watch. Um, but, you know, when when in doubt, zoom out, guys. And when you do that, you realize that we are just still continuing this sideways action that we've been in since the end of February. So there is that. Now, guys, um, a couple things on this. I want to bring up uh, this, uh, if I can. Let's see. So this bottom measure, this bottom indicator is uh, the RSI and you can kind of see this purple line is the RSI and we have just dipped below this dotted line which is uh, 30 on the RSI and we've we've started to bounce back today but we did dip below that um, into that oversold territory when whenever the RSI dips below 30 it is considered oversold now, guys, if you zoom out, the last time we were below 30 was right here in August. Now, this uh, this was when um, Evergreen, I believe, um, the real estate uh, company in China dumped, and there was a bit of fear of contagion of that spilling over into the US uh, markets. Um, but yeah, we had this major sell-off from, let's see, like 28,000 down to 24,000. So a good 15% in a day. Um, so that's when we hit this oversold territory last. Now, generally, when whenever the RSI dips into oversold territory, this is a good chance to buy. So we dipped below that right here. And if you would have bought that, which I actually did, this was in uh, August, August 18th, I believe, when we, we had this major dip and I bought quite a bit of Bitcoin right at that dip. And it was kind of annoying. We went sideways for several months uh, until about October, but it ended up being a very good buy. So when, when you see these oversold territories in the RSI, this generally means it's a good time to buy and things will turn around. Now, another thing, guys, with these two areas, actually these three areas we're going to talk about these three areas if you're on social media in crypto in any sense when we are having these these slow bleeds out it is it's almost better just to turn it off and you know kind of walk away go out and touch grass um because there is so much drama on <laughs> on social media. I saw a post yesterday saying that if we broke through 60,000, that was the last support before, uh, wait for it, wait for it. We were going to drop all the way down to 12,000, right about here. Because there's no more support after that 60,000 area. You know, this, this support level that we put in, there's nothing be between that and 12,000. <laughs> you know, don't mind this 50,000 uh, support that we made back here. This was a lot of support right in the $45,000 area. Just disregard the charts entirely and assume that we're going to go to 12,000. You know, social media. That's what I'm talking about is people are just overblown. And honestly, on social media, you have a lot of people that are out there with an agenda. Either they are wanting to dump the price a little. They're wanting to see the, the price dump a little bit more. 
I don't think many people on social media have that power uh, to dump the markets, but they think they do. And um, they want to buy Bitcoin cheaper or, and there are a lot of people like this on crypto social media that just hate cryptocurrency and will fud it fear, you know, they'll spread fear, uncertainty and doubt any chance they can get. They've never actually been into Bitcoin or crypto. They just want to spread fear. So, you know, disregard most of the baseless claims that you see on social media. If you're on uh, any kind of crypto social media, uh, because it's it's just that it's baseless, guys. Um, but another big narrative that I've I've been seeing on this these social media uh, outlets are is that we're making a double top right here. You know, we we pumped up right here, fell down, and we've made this double top just like we did way back in 2021. And this is their claim that, you know, this cycle is doing exactly what it did back here in 2021. Now, let me ask you something. Does this, this little guy remind you of this major cycle top, double top that we had last time? That does not look the same at all to me. I mean... <laughs> What is this? A, a double top for ants? I mean, this is, this, this has not, uh, I don't know where these people are getting this. If anything, this little bump and, you know, double bump here looks much more like this, you know, bump here and bump here that we had last year. Now, guys, I want to I want to zoom in and kind of explain to you guys what happened right there. Uh, if I can possibly work trade view, come on. Oh, <laughs> I have the hardest time running this app. Okay. So back here in 2023, right about here, we had the SEC serving, it was actually probably right this, this very day, the SEC served Binance and uh, Coinbase with a Wells notice, you know, saying that they were going to sue them. And the market tanked. This was back before the SEC was really doing much. And now all of a sudden the SEC was coming after crypto and everybody got super scared. We trended really hard down right away. And then we kind of had a bump and then just traded, trended downwards for quite a while until right about this point when BlackRock said that they were going to apply for a spot Bitcoin ETF. And then we pumped right back up to 32-ish and traded sideways for quite a while and then we dropped right there this is when that uh rsi if you can see this um oh you can't even you know we went into this red rsi which signaled that we were oversold good time to buy and then um we continued on after that. But this, this little double bump here reminds me a lot more, even, to, even with this confluence with the uh, RSI being oversold, this seems like much more of what we're doing. And if we zoom out, you can kind of see what we did after this double top that we had here guys we we went absolutely to the moon and i think we're we're setting up for another move like that uh and then you've got the having you know this green this green line is the having that i've marked and we know what happens after the having we are literally right here guys and if honestly, think about it this way. 
if we look back in four years and and all of this this up and down that we've been experiencing this sideways <laughs> action that we've been experiencing the last few months if we look back in four years on this and it looks like this i will be happy now what i mean by that is if we go back and and zoom into this uh time frame of last last cycle you'll kind of see that we had, I mean, we had some 10% days. And when you're in it, I mean, this is how it looks. And it looks a lot worse than it actually is when you zoom out. And especially when, when you get four years into it later, it ends up looking like small potato, like absolutely nothing. Um, you know like just flatlining so if we get four years down the road and this what we're experiencing right now looks like this we will be <laughs> we'll be clear up here off the charts guys so um you know it, i i just don't understand with the fed getting ready to turn the money printing printing on um and where we're at in the cycle, I really can't understand people's mentality thinking that this bull run is over. You know, the Fed is going to cut rates. And we know what, what happens to Bitcoin when they do that. Bitcoin is specifically a hedge against that kind of thing. So... I don't know, guys, hang in there. Keep dollar cost averaging in. Like I said, um, the RSI was, it looks like we bounced back above uh, that 30 area, but it's still a great time to be um, dollar cost averaging in, in my opinion. I think up until probably September will probably be a good time, at least if you're looking at trading the cycle. If you're looking at long term, Dollar cost averaging in all the time is a good good idea. But um, if you're looking to trade the cycle, I would say, you know, right around here in the cycle is probably when you want to cut it off. You don't want to be dollar cost averaging once we go into these parabolic moves. Uh, it's just it just uh, increases your risk in. Um, you know, not being able to, to time that market um, and get out with a reasonable take, I guess, which, you know, this bear market or this, ba uh, this bull market could be different as I've kind of talked about in some previous episodes. And a lot of people are kind of saying that, it, you know, with, with Mo Wall Street in the mix, we could go up and and not see a, a big 80% drawdown like we usually do. Um, like right here, uh, this last bull market, we saw a 70, 77 to 80% drawdown. A lot of people are saying with Wall Street in the mix, we are not going to see that big of a bear market this this time around so you know timing the market this time might not be a great thing it might be a good thing to just keep dollar cost averaging in it honestly if i had more money to put in right now with the rsi right right here where we're at and where we're at in the the cycle i would be buying now um and <laughs> it almost makes me want to get a job. You know, go get a job, you stinking bum. The bums will always lose. Uh, <laughs> Lebowski. Anyways, guys, that is my outlook on, on things. Now, here's an interesting thing I was just thinking about the other day. Uh, if you ever want to know if i get bearish on bitcoin um 
I I don't often. Uh, I think there's you know way too much with Bitcoin. I I really do believe in Bitcoin um, as a better system for for humanity than our traditional finance. But I did catch myself being more bearish than usual. I guess uh, earlier this month. I saw a article um, about Anthony Scaramucci, which is big into Bitcoin, but he was saying early this month that he was expecting just a bunch of inflows of, of institutional money into Bitcoin this month in June. And it kind of took me back and I was like, well, I don't know if that's true. I, I don't know if I see that happening. Now, guys, if you remember in my past videos, you'll remember that I made a point that in March, the end of the quarter, we saw major outflows from the ETFs. And it was my speculation that there were a bunch of institutions that had gotten into these ETFs, but wanted to get out before the end of the quarter so they didn't have to claim Bitcoin on their uh, end of quarter filings. And June is the end of quarter. It's the end of the second quarter. So it was my idea that we might possibly see inst more institutions that don't want to claim Bitcoin on their, their uh, quarterly filings. We might see them exit. And so when I saw that, I was like, I don't know if that's really going to play out that way. And it certainly doesn't seem like it has. So for once, I caught myself being kind of bearish on Bitcoin. But guys, that is so short term. Um, you know, once this month is over, we're going to see those institutions pile right back in, in my opinion, and probably more. There's still a lot of institutions that are still working through uh, doing their due diligence and getting their board on board to buy Bitcoin. You know, these things move very, very slowly in, in traditional finance and with, with big co corporations. There's a lot of hoops to jump through before they can invest in something like Bitcoin. So I think we still have a lot more inflows from institutions to come. Uh, we've got the Fed that will be turning on the money printers this year. And we've got the Bitcoin halving cycle that is barely, not even hardly playing out yet. So uh, I don't know. Hang in there, guys. It's no time to be selling, in my opinion. Keep dollar cost averaging in as you're probably your best bet. Uh, and as always, guys, if you haven't already, please go over and help for them Animal Sanctuary. The end of the month's coming up soon, and I will be on to a different sanctuary, but these guys could really use your help. So jump over and help these needy animals out. It is for the, the number for them sanctuary.org. I do leave that link in the description and you guys can go over and find their PayPal right on their front page or hit up their Patreon. Help these guys out. Very much appreciated. I have no ties to them whatsoever. It's just uh, something I do. I try and support a different animal sanctuary every month uh, to, to help out these animals. So guys, if you could, Go over, donate a couple dollars, dollars to them. And thank you, as always, for taking the time out of your day and watching my video. Um, always appreciated. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.